If you've ever been on Craigslist, then you know the missed connections section is the saddest thing on the internet, which is really saying something. But in music, missed connections can be just as sad. Now what I mean by that, when you have like any kind of chord, like we'll just take a really easy one, a C chord to an A minor chord, there is a note in the scale that you're in that can connect those two. And it can really help making your, make your, make your playing sound a little bit different, more exciting, give you more options on things to do. So in that key, it happens to be this B note right here, 2A. So anytime you go from a C to an A, you can always connect them with that note in between. Which can sound good. Sometimes it can sound annoying if it gets overused, but there's an easy way to find all the notes you can possibly, potentially, connect chords with. And it all comes down to scales. And it's actually a really easy one because you already know all these notes anyways, and you know all these chords, and it'll make more sense once you, once you see it kind of laid out. So we're gonna go in the key of C, and the chords in the key of C are C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, and A minor. Those are the six main chords. And uh, I'll leave a, a link in the comment section if you want to see a video on how, to, on how to find those and understand why those are the six chords. But we're just gonna assume you know those are the chords in C minor. Now, or C major. So in that same scale, the notes are E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So you can kind of think of it as a hand shape. And really all you have to do is just get this one section of notes and get this down. E, F, G. You don't really even have to think about them as, I mean, it helps to know the names of the notes, but you don't have to think about them as the, like an F, an E, and a G. Just think of them as like the open, first fret, third fret, and then the second string, the A string would be open, two, three, open, two, three, open, two, open, one, three, open, one, three. And you can use any of those notes to connect two chords. So uh, let's take chords that are farther apart than just C and A. Let's take uh, a G and maybe walk it, walk it all the way up to a G. And when I say walk, like bass players like take a walk. What that means is really just kind of like connecting these chords with notes. So I guess kind of think like a bass player. Actually, no, I take that back. Never ever think like a bass player. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take this G, walk it to a D. So we could take a G. Now the note after G is A, A, B, C, D. So you can start with a G. And it kind of just acts as like a glue to connect those chords together. And you don't even have to connect different chords to each other. You can use just the knowledge of knowing these notes to kind of use within one chord. So for example, let's just take a regular C major chord. Now let's focus on the D string in the C major, right? So uh, by that little scale that we learned, we know the D string is open, two, and three. Now again, the notes would be D, E, and F, but more importantly is how you use those notes within a C chord. You can actually just do this right now, see it in a C chord, my middle finger's on the two, second fret of the D string. So I'm just kind of swapping out all the notes on that string. And I'm just taking it one string at a time. It can be kind of overwhelming thinking of all six strings and the different notes on each of them. So just take one string at a time and just kind of like play around with it. So see it. And then maybe when you get really comfortable knowing that one string, try a different string. Like let's try the A string out. A is A, B, C, open two, three. Any chord that you use, you can even use that D minor chord. Now, every time you do this, you're really making a different chord. Like for the C, you're actually going from a C to a C suspended four to a C suspended two. You don't really even have to think of it that way. Just think of altering different chords and then connecting them to each other. So I'll take a C, I'll alter it with this. Now you can do these in order, ascending or descending. Like if I was gonna go from an E minor chord all the way up to a C chord, I could go in order. So E, E, F, G, A, B, C, and then backwards. Or 
you can just kind of skip around. Like you don't always have to go up and down. And that's kind of like the value in scales in general. You don't always have to descend or descend. A lot of people will tell you to practice them like this. But that's just kind of like to get that shape in your mind. To really use scales in a way that isn't boring, you want to be able to jump around within the scale. So like instead of an A minor, going back to an E. You can kind of take an A minor and play around a little bit. And then just really learn all these notes. And then alter the chords you do know. And you can do them with pull-offs and hammer-ons to make them sound a little flashier. There I'm just taking a D minor and I'm altering the high E string, which is open one three. D minor, pull off. And every time I do this, I'm making a new chord, but the name of the chord isn't important, it's just, does it sound good? Now, I also wanna kinda of talk about how you can use bar chords and different scale shapes to do that on an electric guitar. But first, let's take a break to look at an actual Craigslist missed connection. I would like to chat more to the cashier I met at the above store today. I commented on your figure as we chatted during my purchase. Let me know if it's you by telling me how you thought you were gaining a pound or two and what happened when I asked if the pan I was buying was magnetic and how it affected you. What? If the pan was magnetic and how it affects you, like how magnetism affects you? I don't understand. Has that ever worked once? Anyways, Craigslist Connections. Check it out, always good for a laugh. Now, electric guitar, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use different chord shapes that you probably already know in the same key, key C, here's the A minor shape, okay? Now you probably already know this shape, it's just starting, and we're only gonna do the first three strings, so five, seven, eight on E, five, seven, eight, five, seven. So this is A minor. And this stacks up right next to C major, which now my middle finger's on the eighth fret, every finger gets its own fret. Eight, 10, seven, eight, 10, seven, nine, 10. So two chord shapes, or two scale shapes. And we're gonna use those same things. So we're gonna start with an E minor chord. And then we're gonna go to A minor. We're gonna go to E minor. And then to C major up here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of the rest of this chord shape and C. And inflect it, kind of like a little Jimmy Chili Peppers thing. Right? So uh, now here's how we're going to connect these. Instead of just going B to A, we're going to add some of the stuff we've learned. We can still use the open, open one, three, open two, three. We can still use those in combination with this and this. So we'll take an E minor. Now all I'm doing is I'm inflecting this A minor chord with these notes in a scale. And if I want to, I can add this G note, which remember, E, F, G in between zone. So. I can use in between A, C, and there's the B note right there, so E, F, G, A, B, C. So I'm just using scales, all I know about, and there's only three strings, to kind of add. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. scale 
scales, and they're just really simple ones. You probably already know the minor scale and the major scale. To connect the chords and to play within those chords, and thus I'm getting a much different guitar sound than just playing E, A, C. representative of the chord that I'm using. So never miss those connections ever again.